What's up everybody and welcome back to Epic Rides. Before we get started here, you may have noticed something different with the intro. Is that... Is that a new sponsor? Holy crap, it is a sponsor! I'm super excited to announce that Epic Rides has partnered with the premier power sports dealer in Manitoba, Fisher Power Sports. Look, I didn't start this channel or website for the sweet, sweet sponsorships that inevitably come hand in hand with being the perfect specimen of peak physical form and the fierce wit and laser focus of a young Stephen Hawking dosed to the eyeballs with Adderall. In fact, in my first year of sharing motorcycle routes, reviews, and moto camping adventures that anyone would put their support behind this little endeavor is kind of mind-boggling. Especially because, as all of you know, my peak physical form is more in line with a stuffed potato than an Adonis. And my wit is more in line with a drunk toddler furious with the government, especially the highways branch, than the David Bowie of the theoretical physics world. However, after attending a couple of great trade shows this year, with numerous great conversations about motorcycles, moto adventure, and the motorcycle industry, I struck up a friendship with the folks at Fisher Power Sports. I knew that I wanted to work with them in some capacity, and luckily they were excited to work with me. They see what I'm working towards with this channel and the direction I'm going in the future, and they're pumped about what the future has in store. I'm humbled that Fisher Power Sports would put their trust in me to grow alongside their business, and I'm so excited to share this new partnership with you. I don't take things like support lightly. It means the world to me that a business would entrust me to help them grow and be willing to be instrumental in growing Epic Rides. I'm overjoyed to announce this partnership here today, and as we roll into 2023, Fisher Power Sports and I are working together to bring some great benefits to you guys that join me on this crazy journey, including discounts and much more. Stay with us as we roll these announcements out along with some major plans in 2023. So, once again, welcome to the Go Rodeo Fisher Power Sports, and welcome back everyone to part one of our final episodes of 2022. As I was staring forlornly out the window watching Mother Nature crap snow all over my yard and trying to figure out how to end my first season of epic rides, I began daydreaming about the previous riding season. It wasn't the riding season I initially planned on, but it was the season I absolutely needed. From an early season get-off that had me wheezing through a sprained rib, to some spectacular locations and amazing people that made this season absolutely brilliant. So this week we're going to look back on the season that was, and hopefully by looking back we can start to get real excited for the season to come. After deciding to create a show around motorcycle adventures in Manitoba, I got off to an early start. As soon as the temps were above freezing during the day, I got to work filming. My first filmed ride was April 3rd. It was more than an equipment test than an epic ride, but I definitely learned a couple of things. Like, how not to mount a camera to the handlebars. The first official shoot was April 9th, when my buddy Warren and I headed out to Lac de Bonnie to do a photo shoot for the Epic Rides banner that I would be using for a series of trade shows. If you've seen me at any of the outdoor shows this year, you know the banner I'm talking about. If you haven't, it looks like this. The following day, I headed out into the cold once again to film the very first episode of Epic Rides and went on a trip to Alfred Hole Goose Sanctuary. This was a big one for me, as it was going to be a proof of concept. I also managed to cajole my friends the Mitchells to come out and spend the day following me around and shooting some footage. I don't know if it was the fun of watching me dodge potholes all day, or if Cindy had a slip and fall incident at some point that caused irreparable brain damage, but this was one of the first of an almost perfect run that Cindy, Dallas, Skylar, Nate and Danny, or some combination of the five would join me for adventures throughout the summer. I'm seriously so thankful for this group. They have been invaluable for helping film, especially Nate who showed some real interest in learning how to be a camera operator. So I set him loose with my big camera and a gimbal, and he nailed a lot of b-roll for the show. Both Nate and Danny have also gamely strapped GoPros to themselves to get great shots, and even heroically filmed some great carnival ride footage that I'm far too wussy to get on my own. Incidentally, they've also been a great chase team, picking up bits of motorcycle that have fallen off the bike after I did something dumb. And this has kind of been a repeated issue, me doing something dumb that is. Case in point, when I chucked myself off my bike while filming the Sandylands episode, spraining a rib and busting my panniers in the crash. Skylar and Dallas helped me hike back and picked up my messed up panniers for me. I've been blessed in that I've had several very good friends join me on rides this year. My brother from another mother, Warren Graydon, and I put down thousands of kilometers while filming. Warren has been there since the start, and I couldn't imagine a better riding companion to join me on these adventures. Now, if I could just convince him to put some knobbly tires on his Roadstar, we'd be able to do some real exploring. 
Not that it really slowed Graydon down at all, as he gamely put on I don't even know how many kilometers on gravel and fire roads on his thousand pound bike. There's a tank store run. No, it's all closed up. It's uh, it's all welded up. I have a grinder. Well, I do <laughs> too. Here. It's not here, but I, I, have I, I do too. But uh, apparently, there's not much inside there left anymore. Oh, okay. They got it up pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's 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 not a tank anymore. It's a it's a monument. Gotcha. But the, the howitzer, it does work. They still use those in the mountains for bringing down avalanches. Yeah, yeah. Was, I saw that on the sign. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah they bring, bring uh, uh, the avalanches down. And it's and it makes me wonder, actually, I used to live, I lived in Fernie for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now I'm trying to think how they do their avalanche control. Howitzer. I wonder if they did it. Well, they, they, that's the only thing I, that I Either know. Either that or a helicopter. Yeah. Well, I know that they did some of the, they, like, they, some of the times that they did the helicopter They thing. can drop an, expo uh, yeah. an explosive in, yeah. in, in, in there. Yeah. But this is, this is just so much more uh, fun. Fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had the wrong job when I lived in Fernie. <laughs> Could have been the actual yeah. helicopter operator. <laughs> Speaking of putting bikes designed for the open road in really silly places, another dear friend, Tyler, joined me for a ton of routes this year, riding his Vulcan like a Dakar bike to visit some really cool spots, including Blue Lake Campgrounds and Duck Mountain Provincial Park. If there's one thing I learned this year, it's that it truly doesn't matter what kind of bike you ride. With the exception of entering a motocross race or attempting to navigate the Darien Gap, the bike you own is the right bike for the job. Tyler, what you doing? I was thought I would. I'm not getting a lot too much. Don't put me on camera. <laughs> You're on camera. You're the star. I'm the star of the show. Uh, I don't. I don't even know. What I, I'm <laughs> Attempting doing. to try and blow some of yeah. the dust that was accumulated from yesterday's <laughs> ride off of the bikes, and it's not working. New to the riding game, but game for anything. Later in the season, one of my oldest friends, Darren, joined the shit show for a few rides. I'm not sure how much footage I've got of Darren, but it has been really amazing reconnecting over a mutual love of motorcycles. Another very old friend, and I don't mean old like Methuselah, I mean old as in we've been friends since junior high old, Ryan, who was the first of us to succumb to the motorcycle addiction, joined us on a couple of rides when he wasn't busy raising his family and working. Ugh, priorities, right? Ryan is a killer rider and has put more hard miles on a CBR 500 than anyone I've met. Ryan and I went to explore the flooded 307 early in June when he went full on adventure bike a few times. So that's the crew of regulars that have been there with me throughout the season. When I started filming this show, I expected to do a lot of solo moto camping and off-road riding, and I got to do a bunch of that. But I also got to do some touring on asphalt that I wouldn't normally have done if it weren't for this awesome group. I feel like the breakout star of this season has to be what I've been referring to as my old clapped out V-Twin, aka the Mighty Strom. A 2009 Suzuki V-Strom 650 that owes me literally nothing. From snow to mud and everything in between, the Mighty Strom has been my constant companion, racking up mile after mile without so much as a whimper. Of course there has been maintenance that needs to happen, but for what it's worth, she's been an absolute beauty through a metric shitload of rides. Here's the thing, you can do far worse than a V-Strom for your first adventure bike. They're affordable, damn near unkillable as long as you do the required maintenance, and relatively comfortable. Obviously there are a ton of bikes out there that handle the road better, and almost every ADV bike currently being built is better in the dirt, largely due to the V-Strom's predilection towards diving nose first into the first sign of soft sand. But given a bit of time and effort, she'll get you there. I put over 30,000 kilometers on the Mighty Strom this season, and basic maintenance aside, she has performed flawlessly. For around 3,500 Canadian dollars, or like a pack of smokes in American dollars, you can have a reliable steed that will grudgingly go pretty well anywhere, although I wouldn't want to go airborne and hit really technical trails without a lot of experience and some aftermarket juju. When Suzuki created the V-Strom, they created a wonderful dual bike that while it's really aimed for the road duties, it will go pretty much wherever you want it to go within reason. If your idea of adventure travel is more Route 66 with some gravel roads thrown in than BDR, you'll love the V-Strom of any generation. 
it carves corners beautifully, its linear power band makes acceleration pretty fun, and it has enough off-road capability to head down a gravel road without feeling like you're going to have a get-off every time you start to corner. But, if you live the dual sport life where the possibility of deep sand, sharp ruts and technical terrain is on the menu, then the V-Strom will leave you disappointed. Obviously, I can't speak to the new V-Strom DE with its increased suspension travel and a parallel twin power plant, but my guess is the new V-Strom will be a killer ADV platform for asphalt warriors who like to occasionally hit the gravel. Time will tell, and honestly, I hope Suzuki proves me wrong, but I'm not going to hold my breath. So, what am I riding for 2023? Well, that's a question for a whole other video, but when looking for a new ride, I focused on the following requirements. The motor must be bulletproof, the bike must be able to handle all types of terrain, it must have a strong aftermarket parts environment, and it must be affordable. I can tell you what it's not. It's not a BMW R1250 GS adventure, as I don't have Obi-Wan McGregor's money, and it's not a KTM 1290 adventure as I don't live exclusively off of Monster Energy drinks and don't want to end up inadvertently twisting the throttle while going over a rock and accidentally sending myself into near-Earth orbit. Finally, it's not even a Tenere 700. This has a lot to do with how rare these things are. Last time I walked into a motorcycle shop and inquired about one being in stock anytime soon, the salesman laughed so hard I thought he was going to have a stroke. I can tell you it's a bike I've loved for years, and it's a bike that fits my needs like a perfectly sized velour jumpsuit. I'm excited to share my new ride, but as I said earlier, I'll do a dedicated video to introduce you to her, so stay tuned for that. For now, let's give credit where credit's due and thank the mighty Strom for her flawless service. Looking towards 2023, I've mentioned there are some big plans in the works. For one of these plans, I need your help out there. If you or someone you know belongs to an ATV or snowmobile club in Manitoba, I'd love to hear from you. I've got a major expedition in the works and I need some route planning advice. Please reach out to me at noel at epicridesmb.com as I'd love to chat. Okay, so that about does it for part one of our Christmas special. Tune in to the next episode where we revisit some of the most memorable rides of 2022 and look back at some of the prettiest spots I've visited in Manitoba this past season. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon thing so you get notified when a new episode is available. Finally, thank you for watching Epic Rides this week and remember to explore often and explore local. Peace.